Good morning, friends. We're out here doing our morning walk. The dogs and I. Another beautiful, beautiful day here. Um, probably about the same temperature yesterday. About 20 degrees. And there's no wind today, so that's nice. But uh, lots of blue sunshine. Cold sunshine, but it's beautiful. Let me show you. beautiful clear blue sky day <laughs> so we are out here walking and enjoying enjoying the beautiful day and uh, just thinking about uh, some things this morning and thought I would just share my prayers and thoughts with you this morning um, I was thinking this morning of the Lord's Prayer and how he gives us an outline on how to pray and so whenever I pray I try to kind of generally keep that outline in my thoughts as I pray it's not something we have to say word for word but you know it helps to kind of have an outline of things that we need to pray for and um, it, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful way to pray. We start out with praise. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So first we start out by praising our Heavenly Father. and We ask for his kingdom to come. And all of us know that his kingdom uh, is here on earth. And we pray for his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And when we do that, we understand that um, his kingdom is uh, his way, his will, his plan. Not necessarily our design, right? And um, that's sometimes, you know, hard for us to understand. But his ways are always best. So his, his kingdom come, his will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Isn't that an interesting thought? Uh, that when we pray, we, <laughs> we oftentimes pray for our will to be done, don't we? I mean, it's my will to stop the pain and sorrow and the suffering and the agony, and disease and war, all of these things. That's my will. That's what I would want. But his will is a little different because he sees the end from the beginning. And so when we pray, we must align ourselves with his will. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I have to remind myself of that when I pray. Lord, I ask you for these things that your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And then we say, give us this day our daily bread. And when we pray that, we are asking the Lord to give us just what we need for today. And many times that's, that's usually not good enough for us. We're thinking into the future. We, we want to plan ahead. And it's good to plan ahead. But when we pray, the most important thing we can do is just, Lord, take care of our daily needs today. Give us this day our daily bread. That yeah. Good morning to you too, sir. <laughs> so we're looking at this um, circle here around the sun. It's a rainbow and it completely encircles the sun. And we are just amazed. It's just very, very interesting. As I was walking along, a neighbor came out and stopped to talk to me, and we were talking about some things, and we finished our conversation, and she's gone through some struggles with her husband's uh, health, and I turned around to leave, and I looked up, and I saw this. Do you see it? Can you see that uh, rainbow? It circles the sun. Now, where I'm standing right here, you can't see where it completely 
um, makes a full circle but it does it's a circle that completely surrounds the sun a rainbow circle and um, you know the Lord just gives us little little sweet surprises and we just kind of have to be looking for them and then we just thank him and we so we both watched and her heart was lightened and mine was too um, as we watched the that circle around the sun that rainbow isn't that crazy isn't that neat uh, you can't really see it now because uh, I'm walking up this hill and um, so my view is going to change but anyway I just love how the Lord brings little pictures of beauty and hope to our hearts and um, we just know that he loves us so much and so as I was saying I was talking about how we are just to ask for the Lord to give us what we need for our daily bread. And you know, just like that rainbow around the sun, that that's food for my soul. <laughs> you know, and so that daily bread isn't just for our physical bodies, but our spiritual bodies too. So I just want to thank the Lord. You can see it just a little bit right there as I'm walking up this hill. And um, I'm just so thankful that he provides all the things that we need moment by moment. We just walk and trust in him. And he's always with us. And so as I was thinking, continuing on with the prayer, um, give us this day our daily bread. And then... It says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And uh, look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? Um, I don't know if you can see. There's some turkeys. <laughs> They're running across the snow. <laughs> the dogs see them. Let me see. I don't think I can get them in here. And so I was thinking about how when we ask the Lord um, to help us in a difficult situation if somebody has wronged us and I think that's one of the most difficult prayers to pray because I've certainly been there and had to do that I've had to pray for someone who has wronged me and that's really hard to do because what you really want to do is pray for vengeance <laughs> Have you ever felt that way? Or take them out, <laughs> bring justice to them. But instead, we're supposed to forgive them. Because if we don't, then the Lord's not going to forgive us of things that we've done wrong. And I think that many of us struggle a lot with that forgiveness. Um, a whole lot. It's very hard to sincerely pray and ask the Lord to bless your enemies, to bless those that curse you, and to bless those that use you deceitfully. Uh, those are kind of some scriptures that uh, when we read them, we, we just, they, they're hard. But at one point in my life, there was a situation where I did, you know, have a very significant situation where we had been wronged it was very obvious and the wrong was was big and it was hurtful and we were struggling trying to walk our way through that and of course I knew that um, I had to forgive and so I got down to pray and I realized you know, I, I agonized over this for a good while on how to carry on and to move on after that situation. And one day I was praying and I said, Lord, you have got to help me forgive. I can't do it on my own. And it was like in that moment, I felt just this sweet presence of the Lord come over me and a deep groaning in my soul for the one that had hurt me so much and I truly began to pray for that person 
and that family and to ask the Lord to bless them. Bless them abundantly. And I pray for redemption of that family. That the Lord would redeem that situation and use it for his ultimate glory and purpose. Look, there it is again. Can you see it? Wow. So, so neat. So, that part of the prayer I've, I'm very familiar with, and it's not, not an easy prayer to pray, I'll tell you. But when you ask the Lord to do it and do the work in your heart, it does truly um, do a redemptive work in your life. And I'll never know if, if my prayers ever change them or not. That's not my, my concern. But I know I did the right thing. And I, that burden left us. And we, we've lived our life in peace since. And that doesn't hang over us. So that's why we have to pray. And that's why we have to forgive. Because it's a burden that, that you carry that weighs you down. And it destroys you. And the only way to get free is to forgive. So as we forgive others, the Lord will forgive us. And so um, the prayer goes, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And so we pray that. We ask the Lord to lead us and guide us and keep us out of any of Satan's tactics, any of his deceits, any of his deception. We ask, Lord, that you would just protect us from the lies of the enemy and the temptations of the enemy. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He's able to deliver us from all the evil plans that the enemy has. We're his children. And oh, how he loves us. Look at that. Look at that. You see, still can see this beautiful rainbow around the sun. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so at the end of the prayer, we're to pray for his kingdom to come once again. And we are to ask again that his will be done. Not our way, not our wishes, but his. And his plan and his ways are always best in the end. Maybe not for the time being. I'm sure Joseph, when he was a slave, didn't think that God's plan was very good. I can only imagine the desperation in his heart as he went about doing the right thing over and over. And yet, here he is now in prison, accused of something he didn't do. But you see how God took that situation that Joseph was in and transformed it into a situation so magnificent, so much bigger than anything Joseph could imagine. He became ruler over all of the land of Egypt and he saved um, not just uh, the people of Egypt, but his family from starvation. And Joseph could never have pictured that in the deep dark dungeon, I'm sure. But you know what? God's timetable's not ours. And so what we have to do is we've got to get on God's timetable. <laughs> you know, that's not so easy sometimes. But with his help, with his little things that he does for us, like this rainbow around the sun today, I mean, it's a completely full circle. A rainbow that completely circles the sun. A rainbow is a promise of, of something beautiful to come. It's a promise that God would never, never bathe the earth again in, in waters that would cover the earth. 
this rainbow is not just a half circle, but it's a full circle. And yet it's circling the sun. Now, it's been up here for at least a good 10 or 15 minutes. Maybe longer, maybe it'll last longer. But this rainbow, I believe, is God's promise to us that He is going to make something beautiful out of the situation that we're in. He is the Son, the Son of God, and He makes all things beautiful in His time. And just like this rainbow is a perfectly a uh, perfect circle in a perfect, beautiful, spectacular way. It circles the sun. Our God has a plan and his ways are best. And we can trust his plan. And I just praise him today. Have thine own way, Lord. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. I don't have any treats. No, I don't have any treats. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I know. I got doggies. Yep. My doggies. You snow all my doggies. Yeah. <laughs> got lots of fur on you. Look at that. Kind of fur. Are you ready for spring? Are you ready for spring? Hmm. I bet you were. Huh? I bet you were. Yeah. Hmm. Good girls. Good girls. All right. I guess I'll go back home. You have a good day. <laughs> Tough girls. Yeah. I walked out here uh, on our back acreage and uh, just to continue watching that rainbow. And uh, it has pretty much, as you can see, I'm going to turn the camera. Faintly still visible, but uh, it's, it was just a beautiful thing to see, just a, a little treat from the Lord. You know, the Lord does stuff like that for us. It may not be tangible things that, that He blesses us with, but there's little special things throughout the day for watching. He's given us our daily bread. Not just in food, physical food, food for our soul. And that's what that was, that rainbow. That was food for my soul, and for my neighbor's soul and anybody else that gets to see it. This is a beautiful world that he created and we're promised that heaven's going to be even more wonderful than this world. And that gives me hope. Hope beyond this world. And it's a beautiful world that we live in. Ugly things are happening, but it's a beautiful world that our God has created for us to enjoy. I hope you have a beautiful, very special day. And look for God's touch in something really small. But it's the little things that make up our daily life and make it so special. God bless you. What are you doing, Candy? Are you gonna help me pray? Hmm? Are you gonna help me pray? Hmm.